December 9th planning board meeting uh, of the city of East Hampton. Uh, anybody here to speak on something not on the agenda? No. Um, all right, did everyone get a chance to look at the minutes from the last meeting? Yes, I did. A motion to approve the minutes as they are. And I'll second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Right. in here. Chat and I. Uh, Olivia, were you? I was not there. All right. Yeah. So three discussions. <gasps> All right, we have no ANRs. And our new business is a discussion of the administrative site plan review in the downtown business district. So Jess, you wanna, we've talked about this before, but it was not with this board necessarily. Right, so when um, I first came on board almost three years ago, this was something that we had sort of toyed with and talked about and I did a little bit of research and um, now three years in and going through permitting with multiple small businesses um i'd like to see if there's a way that the board would be able to find a way through the zoning ordinance to possibly draft something like an administrative site plan review um some of you may know that site plan review is not something that's mandated in mass general laws for zoning it's something that's been kind of created over time through case law and through communities so it's kind of this funky um weird zoning that communities um draft kind of on their own without guidance special permits have a pretty strict way that they need to be done according to the zoning laws you know there's certain time periods that are set in the state laws the appeal periods um but site plan review is, has always sort of been thought of as you know a special permit light it's for projects that are for that are by right projects that need some level of review by the board in terms of how the site is designed the board cannot deny these projects but it's basically a back and forth between the applicants what we've been finding or what sort of the trends that i've been seeing in terms of the permitting and and the applications that are coming before the board are most of the time it's for a change of businesses in the downtown district that's mostly what you've been looking at for the past couple of years we haven't really had anything sort of outside that downtown district and to some of these small businesses you know where the use before really didn't have any impacts wasn't creating a nuisance wasn't causing a disturbance to their neighbors and the new proposed business is kind of in the same vein they still have to go through a review process with the board and it seems like it's you know adds additional time and money to these small businesses as they're trying to start up and, and move forward um, it takes time up on your agenda as well um, because there really isn't much to talk about it's like okay great you're coming in and okay how are you going to get rid of your trash and since parking there's no parking requirements downtown it's not like parking is something that you're really looking at or traffic flow it's really in terms of mostly what we've been sort of addressing in terms of the nuisance issue is for our mixed-use businesses that the key thing has been lately is music in the retail spaces wanting to participate in art walk and other arts events um, and how that may conflict with neighbors or residential tenants upstairs and that's mostly what the jurisdiction of the board has been looking at in terms of a nuisance or how these new businesses would impact their neighbors it's really the upstairs tenants um, but a lot of times it's you know it's converting from you know a tattoo parlor to a bakery which may be a little bit more of an extreme and a change of use or an office space to a retail space you know it, it just seems like it's adding additional time and money to small businesses to have to go through this process and so I'm wondering if the board would be willing to consider working with the planning department to develop um, an administrative site plan review so it's a site plan review process that really would be fall under the jurisdiction of um, the building inspector and the city planner together reviewing a project and then being able to approve projects really quickly and more efficiently within a day or two rather than having somebody wait three weeks to a month um, is there a precedence for this not other, in this other communities, in, other communities yeah. have some levels of this and i've done some research they vary i mean i think for us specifically it really has to do with the change of uses in the downtown business other communities have it where if there's you know 
parking is, you know, if the parking changes from less than five spaces or if there's an addition of less than 200 square feet, there, you know, there's variations. Like I said, site plan review doesn't have any master and laws to guide it, so it's always been sort of a, a, a creation of the community and what they need it for. Some communities have what's called a minor site plan review and a major site plan review, and they sort of break it tiered up in that different way. Um, Springfield recently just adopted new zoning code, and they have an administrative site plan review process. Is there a difference between review, excuse me, review and approval? We no, have section 12.9 in the zoning book here, all about site plan approval. What, what are the differences? It's just it's the it's the semantics of the community. So some communities call it site plan review, some communities call it site plan approval. We call it site plan. Approval. So I would say it would be an administrative site plan approval process just to be consistent with our own language. So it would be essentially to kind of review what's here already and find a way to really take it out of the planning board or find the things that could be brought to, made easier to the planning department. And, and what I'm thinking is it would for be for uses that are within the same use category. So if we've got, in our table of uses, we've got kind of header categories um, in table 5.1. So we've got um, residential and we have one called retail and service. Now, within that retail and service category, we have a ton of different types of retail and service things. Um, sometimes we're getting things that are not in here. S sometimes we're looking for categories. I mean, that's, when we talk about streamlined permitting at some point in form-based code, which is a type of zoning uh, that a lot of communities are starting to move towards, um, it basically takes out all of these detailed different uses and kind of just makes it as a category and says if you've got a retail use, this is the approval process. If you have a service use, this is the approval process. Rather than having all of these really random things, because you're never going to catch everything. Yeah. There's always going to be something missing. But as long as it's sort of under a major category, you can kind of, you know that it's kind of got that same level of possible nuisance that could happen. So um, I'd say that maybe the caveat is that if the building inspector and myself feel that in this administrative approval process, we would feel more comfortable to kick it to the planning board because we feel like it, it, it's got a higher level of, of changes, we want to have that flexibility to do so. And I would yeah. want the So that would be considered major minor. Kind of, but we would need to figure out like what, what are those thresholds that yeah. would, would kick How it to the How many of these have we had in the last year or two? I don't really recall seeing many. What do you mean? Well, how many have come before the board? How many permits? I Site mean, plan approvals were used. Quite a few. I mean, we yeah, have. We have like, that. well, that's how many are we talking about? Oh. Like eight to ten, maybe? Eight to ten, okay. Yeah. I know but, I have heard from at least one local business owner who said that the delay in opening due to the site plan review process, you know, put them teetering on the edge financially by the time they were finally able to open. So I think for s small business owners getting off the ground, that time delay can definitely cost you. And, and I'd say sort of the flip side, because I know that there have been, I know specifically yeah. which businesses there are, yeah. some folks are coming in completely unprepared as well. And so we've yeah, been working, we're, we're starting to partner with the chamber and the new chamber executive director to come up with a new small business, a first time small business owner workshops um, similar to like a first time home buyer so that we'll have you know an attorney a real estate agent an insurance person planning department fire building health agent so somebody can come in and say if, or we could you know have an idea as a panel and say this is sort of what's under my jurisdiction if you think you're going to serve food in your business these are all the things you're going to start triggering and you need to think about that in your business plan rather than then coming in with an unclear business plan saying we want to open this type of business and not really understanding what the implications of what your business means in terms of the permitting. And that's sort of the other side that I've seen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is, is well, I think that's a great idea. So when we talked about this last time, though, it was a broader area because I think it was citywide, right? And we, it was also, a, it was more general, small projects, not just changing use. And so you think it's better to streamline it this way to sort of be downtown business, just change of use with sort of an escape hatch that if this looks like and it's going to be one of those things with, you know, late night live music or something where you may need the board or a public hearing, that that would be something that you guys would want to be able to opt right. out. Yeah, I, I'm a little concerned about that, Jess. I mean, because the board could change the, hopefully not for at least 50 years, <laughs> your position could change. And I, I don't know that, I mean, 
my instinct is always to streamline things for, for, for businesses, for the community. I just think that's better. But we're also sitting here, all of us, with a responsibility to uphold the city's rights and community. And looking at the criteria of conformance, there are things which I think a board should be involved in review for. I, I think it's possible to review these, but I worry that maybe we're, we'll be relinquishing uh, something that uh, should be for board review. I think if it's minor stuff and it's just a change of view, so you're literally, there's going to be no greater impact at all on the rest of the community other than the fact that it's going to change from, you know, a doctor to a tattoo parlor or something like that, that it's... Because they have things like adequate means of wetlands, watersheds, aquifers. Right, but it's downtown yeah, business. Downtown so business. remember like when the tattoo parlor yeah, place opened up in downtown business and we went down that list and we were like, none, none of these that apply. apply. Yeah. Yeah. No parking. The, literally the only one that applies, I think, is like the rubbish removal stuff because you're yeah. tapping into city water, you, you know, you, the building exists, you can't, there's no trees on the lot. Well, you know. the tattoo, you've got bodily, you've got like... The hazardous waste, hazardous yeah, right, yeah, we, had that, we had that like waste, the hazardous waste and the rubbish removal, like that, that was like the only one that really applied. And the tattoo is obviously something that sort of is a little different. And so maybe because it's got the hazardous waste, it's something where Jess may decide that in this specific situation. Would you, it's not in this, would you want to, as you are envisioning how this would be developed? And we'd go through it, obviously. But is that one thing that would trip you off? Well, there's hazardous waste, send it back to the board, or would you want a rubber stamp? I think it depends on what their answer is. I mean, I, I, most applicants generally will come and talk to either the building. Well, this is generally how it happens. Somebody goes upstairs to get a business certificate. They can't get a sign off on a business certificate unless they comply with zoning. So they either have to get a sign off from the building inspector or myself from their business certificate that they meet the zoning or they've gone through the permitting process in order to get the business certificate. They need the business certificate so that they can file under their tax code as a business. What often happens is somebody walks in and says, I need your signature for this business certificate. And I say, I can't sign that because you haven't gone through the proper permitting approval process. And they're like, what? and said, yes, you need, this is what you need to do. Well, I wasn't prepared for that. I understand, but I cannot sign off on this until you go through the proper mm -hmm. So I think there's a twofold thing. I think having an educational process, working with the chamber to make sure it's clear, like this is our process, this is what needs to happen. I think, personally, I think there's some level of responsibility on future business owners to do their research and to do their job and to understand what they need to do before they can just get right. a business certificate. And that's, it, but providing resources from the city to, so that people can be educated is, is one part of it. Well, that's where they they save their money is by doing all that. And then when they come here, we shove them out and they got to do it all over again. So, do all businesses, whether or not they're going to be members of the Chamber of Commerce, do they all go through the Chamber before they get started? Not necessarily. It's up to the you business to be themselves. So, to be a chamber so therefore, there are still those people who may not have any kind of education and be, be properly prepared to start their business That's because true. they haven't, right. you know, gone through and the But chamber. I think by partnering the Chamber, having a Chamber City event, sponsoring we're sort of trying to capture everybody those that may be chamber members and those that may right. not but can we're getting a little off topic can i ask a clarifying question yeah. um the the change of use does that apply only if there's an actual change of use like from tattoo parlor to bakery or anytime there's a business shift like even if it's bakery to bakery that's still if it's still bakery to bakery you're okay okay if there's if the change of use is staying the same mm -hmm. they don't have to go through a permitting process mm -hmm. but if it's going from a tattoo parlor to a bakery or if it's going mm -hmm. from a medical office to a typewriter repair store, or if it's going to, you know, like right. every and and the in the scenario where somebody buys a business and keeps operating the same one is one of the awkward parts about our board oversight because if somebody buys a bakery and continues to run a bakery, they're not coming here to have us look at their waste removal and things like that. Right. They they get to keep operating, and so there's sort of a weird scenario there where it's that like doesn't it. well, it's not slipped through. It's just that. There's sort of an assumption that on a lot of the stuff, it's something that you get, it gets caught if there's a problem. And that in general, if you're not doing anything wrong, it doesn't bubble up. So I mean, I think that, I mean, I guess it would depend on how it's written and what you guys like want to put together as far as a draft, but I don't. Right, and I think that we could think about this is that if we wanted to put together a framework in that if there was a reason we wanted to build off it, like at one point we were looking at green performance standards. And one of the things that we were talking about under the green performance standards was having some, or there was language in there about an administrative site plan approval process. We haven't moved forward on that. We've sort of cabled it. 
But if there ever appeared to be a situation where we wanted to build off of that, I think we could we could do that. But right now, in my opinion, the, what we really need it for is this downtown business mm -hmm. changes in the small business community. And I think, Jim, off of what you said, I think that's what makes me more excited about this is that it's limited to downtown business, which eliminates a lot of the sort of stickier areas that might come up. So I think it's a good area to sort of try it out on and see how it works. I mean, it's a very narrow situation where it's just a change of use in the downtown potential business. potential benefit, but we and have I to keep our eye on it. I totally think that's true. I think it's, I mean, it's not something that we would be, you know, delegating forever. We could always opt out of it. And I think it's also something that we can review and see, you know, at the end of the year, what have you done? What were the cases? Did you, know, you just intimate it? that you would start the writing process, draft something, and bring it to us? Mm -hmm. I, I intimated that. <laughs> I volunteered, Jess. That's what I thought. <laughs> I, well, I, mean, I, I would prefer I, to have it right in the <laughs> Well, that's the thing is that, I mean, I think that <laughs> you and the building inspector are going to be the ones that are going to be dealing with this. So I'd much rather have you guys talk about what you're comfortable with. Right. And, I mean, especially because I don't think either of you are people that want to take on more than they're comfortable with anyway. So I think right. that they'll be cautious in drafting it. And I think you're definitely the people who put it together. And, of course, you can always have something that can come to the board on what had happened during that process. Mm -hmm. You can say this is what is going on in the downtown sure. business district and this is what's saving us time and saving the applicant time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about an appeal process? Say uh, <clears throat> you want a building inspector to turn this guy down, could, could they appeal it to the Absolutely. whole board? That's a good idea. I think that's mm -hmm. a great idea, Harry. Or ZBA or somebody, yeah, right. but having some appeal process. ZBA t typically tends to be more of the appeal board. Right. So it probably makes sense to keep that, and, and they already have a fee for appeal, so it might make sense to yeah, keep, keep it in that. their jurisdiction. Yeah. Right now in there we have like failure to act language, 60 days that automatically approves it. And yeah. I mean, we we could still part. have all of that same stuff. I mean, we could still say that, you know, if, if we don't, uh, Springfield is actually that the timeline is similar to what our current site plan approval. I don't, I don't want to drag it out any longer than it absolutely yeah, has to be. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I, what, the easier processes overall. I'd like to have it be in such a way that the building inspector and I would set an appointment with an applicant, sit down, review all of the information, you know, make a determination of whether we feel comfortable approving based on what they're presenting or whether we want to kick it to a board. So. Well, and it seems to be where we're going with our downtown is that people are buying existing right. spaces and turning into something else. And if it's literally that, and there's a way to do it a few days after they walk in here and sit down and do it in a meeting instead of waiting until the next board meeting and going through all this stuff. Mm -hmm. right. I certainly think it's worth having the planning department put something together right. for us to look at. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Okay. I will Very good. Do it. All right. Uh, the only other thing on our agenda is uh, ZBA. Uh, requesting comments on an application, I would suggest that we give our usual response. Give our usual what is it? Take anyway. no action. Hey. Uh, <coughs> that it appears to be a. Uh, it's FL Roberts. The, um, is that that side thing again? Yes. Yeah. That's not going on for you. How long has that been going on for? So like the, So <laughs> what happened is that the the city attorney provided an opinion that. The ZBA had determined that it was not an electronic messaging sign, that it was a changeable sign, and then the city attorney looked at the language of the sign ordinance and it said that any use, that any sign that's not listed in the table of signs is prohibited. Changeable sign was not listed in the table of allowed signs, even though they've done changeable signs in the past. So, so be, due to that, the applicant withdrew their application without prejudice. They provided it to the building inspector for a permit and denied it, so now it's going back to the ZBA for an appeal. Hmm. A motion to uh, your response recommending no response. Do we take no, or take or no should action? We just take no action? Take no action. Right. Yeah. Do we need to make a motion to take no action, or can we just take no action? Well, I'll make a motion that we take right. no action. Then I will second right. that motion. All in favor of taking no action? Aye. 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 One more thing before you all disappear under administrative items. I don't know if the board members that attended the public safety subcommittee meeting last night would like to update the other committee members on what happened. We were there <laughs> on Tuesday, uh, the second or fourth.
time of the week, which it is really uncomfortable. <laughs> you really, I mean, if you're going to be committed, you got to be yeah, committed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm working on it. Uh, and we we met with um, with the subcommittee from the city council, and we went through their entire document, uh, which was really well written on talking about um, uh, street uh, approval. Give me the appropriate terminology. Public ways. Public ways. Procedures. So this is the second draft, right? Yeah. And they took, you, you were both there? And Jim was there. Jim was there. Cool. Do you want to add to it? No, I mean, I think we went through it. Um, I mean, I think there's a lot of other boards that they're going to talk to as they put this together. And um, I think it seems like it's once it gets done, I think it'll streamline the process for people. I felt like we were able to add a lot as a group. There yeah. was a, a lot of good ideas uh, that they, they modified into the document. And it seemed to me it was really going in the right direction. Uh, they said at the beginning that they threw the kitchen sink into it, and they really did. There was a lot of data there. And I think that the end result from our meeting was to hopefully pare it down quite a bit into just the essentials. Yeah, I think the layout will be the key part to the whole thing, how it gets finalized. But it was good. Is, Anything else? Oh, sorry. Is any of that that we dealt with last night going to be part of the new software that the city is getting? I don't think that's in the first phase, but I was thinking about that myself last night and if there was a way that it could be incorporated into the online system. Because that, that would seem be to be, It may be a later phase if yeah, that happens. Yeah, that would seem to make as much sense. Yeah, no, absolutely, have it I agree. Formats that it's there. Is everybody aware of what? Okay, so the city right now is in the process of working with Viewpoint Software to put together um, an online permitting process for building permits and mm -hmm. um, in, I, I, my belief is that the planning permits and conservation permits and ZBA will all be part of this first phase of development. Right now when somebody pulls a building permit, um, they need to get signatures from all of the departments, um, you know, the tax to make tax department to make sure that they pay their taxes on their property, fire, um, often planning, conservation. So rather than have somebody literally walk around with a piece of paper, which they may or may not find the entity that needs to sign the piece of paper, um, we're in the process of working with viewpoints so that somebody can apply for a permit online. Um, it will go through the review process from all the departments from our desk, so nobody needs to walk around. We can look at everything in the system. We can, we, can, we can sign off on it. We can provide comments. We can do whatever we need to do. And then once all of this, everybody has sort of checked off that they've looked at it, then, then a permit will be will be granted, and the, and the um, individual can come in and pay the fee that's required for a part of the permit. So for us, somebody would be able to submit uh, a special permit application online. They could submit a site plan approval application online. Um, and again, I when I get applications, I send it out to health department, police, fire, conservation commission, ZBA, building inspector for comment prior to when we meet. So I would be able to do the same thing as, and have the application online in the system. We'd be able to file all the decisions in the system. So when it comes to zoning enforcement, the building inspector will have a tablet out in the field. If he sees a zoning violation, he can pull up the decision right in the field. He can print out a cease and desist order right in the field from his wireless printer. What's the ETA? Um, so early, what year's coming up? 2015? I don't know what year. <laughs> <laughs> it's early 2015. All year. Yeah, great. So, so you've been able to do everything from your desk? We can, but we're still, you know, we're still open here in the office too. So if somebody right. feels more comfortable filing in right. person, they certainly can do that as well. But it will just be able to streamline. But we're likely too late to get this public way acceptance uh, in the first rollout of the software. Yeah, I think because of cost, we're really sort of focusing on the building department as the primary person right now yeah, because yeah, people sure. need to walk That's around. Yeah. Um, but we are going to be able to do conservation and planning. Well, we'll Excellent. Great. That'd be good. Okay. How are you? I got a hypothetical question for you. I'm not sure <clears throat> if uh, a major uh, zoning or ordinance uh, change was made and it got attacked by the uh, Common Council concerning something, how difficult would it be to uh, override that and change it again? Well, you could certainly, I have to think, if, if a zoning is rejected, you have to wait two years to bring it back. If it goes through, I think you could probably immediately file a new thing. It makes it heavy to get changed in a heartbeat then, more or less. 
could, but you still need to go through the full well, process yeah, yeah, and vetting yeah, it out, yeah. which from a political standpoint may, may or may not work in your favor. If it had right. just gone through its process and it passed, then... I would think depending upon what the entity was. Yeah, depending on the circumstances. But say something really yeah. big happened and something small was passed, and you have to change something back to what it was. You just want to know, oh, oh, no, I don't have a You can certainly do it. You just need to get through the process. No, she's you good. You need to have, she's good. Yeah. you need to develop it. You need to go through the public hearing process you, for council and yeah. planning, and then yeah. back to council. So you still need to go through all of those steps. Which the first day worked great. The second day she was Anything else? I motion to adjourn. All in favor? Time is it? For the record? It is 625.